Good morning, everyone. Today's project is going to be how I created a desktop sign um, that I am selling on Etsy. I learned a lot um, by making these little signs and I thought it would be helpful to share all the techniques I learned, um, all the products I used while making it, and hopefully uh, can inspire someone else to maybe make a sign of their own. Or you can just see um, maybe how I use the variety of materials to make something similar to this. So to get started, um, what I used was walnut plywood. Um, I buy my walnut plywood larger than what can fit into my Glowforge. I uh, cut it down with a baby table saw. It really is a baby. Um, it gets bogged down a little bit. Uh, I think mostly just because of like the resin and the glues and stuff that they use in plywood, but it works fine. I, I kind of go halfway one side, halfway the other side, and sometimes I finish it with my scroll saw. Uh, it does seem like a lot of work, so if you have a real table saw, uh, use that. Um, but it works fine for my purposes. Eventually, I figure I'll probably upgrade. Um, other materials used, I buy a lot of my acrylic from Houston Acrylic. Oh, and the wood, um, I buy it from a company that I can't pronounce, so it's O-C-O-O-C-H Hardwoods, um, and I, I have used them for a variety of different type, types of wood, uh, plywood, hardwood. Um, customer service is fantastic, and they ship really fast. I don't have an affiliate program or anything, but I just think that they're great, so um, I would highly recommend. Um, as far as the acrylic goes, I use red glitter and silver glitter acrylic that I get, get from Houston Acrylic. Um, and also, uh, I have had no problems with them. Um, I This one is kind of like see-through. This one's less see-through. No, I guess they're about the same. Um, so I use both of these um, with my sign. I use, um, I'll put uh, down in the the notes below the exact brand of masking that I use. Um, you can see that I've already applied it here. I also recently learned if you use like Dawn dish soap and put it kind of on your acrylic, you don't have to use masking. Uh, I think I'm gonna try that today when I actually do the demonstration of how I made the sign because that would just save a lot of time of removing that masking. I've also um, tried burning or cutting it without the masking and I found that it leaves a little bit of residue that I sometimes can buff out, but I, I, uh, I'd just rather have it masked or coated in something so that I know 100% that it retains that shine and doesn't destroy the actual finish on the acrylic at all. Um, the other thing I used is 3M 300LSE uh, double-sided adhesive. Um, this, is a, this was a game changer for me. Um, Basically, you apply it to one side of your acrylic, and then once the letters are cut out, you peel off the back and adhere it to your, your base. The advantage is you're not dealing with messy glues. You're not, it's not running out or you're trying to make sure it adheres um, for really, really, really tiny things like the top of this little apostrophe there. Um, I do try to use some glue because it's just such a small amount of adhesive, although they do make a stronger adhesive. Um, in the 3M tape that might work. Um, I sometimes have to do just a, a little tiny dot of super glue on there. But otherwise, game changer here, um, don't have to work with messy glues. And that comes in all sorts of ways. I buy it um, in a roll off of Amazon. I'll put that below as well. Um, and again, it's pricey, but it's absolutely worth it to me. Um, let's see, what else? I also used this Deco Color Premium um, Oil Based Marker. Um, that mom with the laser, uh, her YouTube channel recommended this and I highly recommend. Um, and that's what I do to fill in the scored or um, etched lines in my acrylic. Um, I also, it has like a kind of crazy smell that reminds me of the enamel paints my dad used to use um, when he would put together models and stuff. Um, and so it has that lovely uh, toxic remembrance smell for me, which is great. Um, okay, let's see what else. I finish my walnut with um, this Bayes High Performance Mineral Oil um, and it's food grade so that when I do like bamboo uh, cutting boards and stuff, I can use it on there. It, it, um, it gives a nice little, sh it's not really a shine, but it, it makes the wood um, deeper in color and, and kind of finishes it. I'm not 100% satisfied 
with that outcome, I would like to try some like spray on lacquer and um, even like brush on lacquer and stuff to see if I can get a finish that I'm a little more happy with. Uh, Glowforge sells finished uh, wood, uh, plywood and such that already has that nice sheen on it. I haven't been able to find another vendor that I really like that has that finished sheen on it, um, which is fine. I can do it myself. I just haven't found a perfect technique that I like so far. So uh, I'll probably do another video at some point that shows kind of my test with different um, lacquers and such. So I think that's everything that I used for this project. Um, and so now let's get right into the demonstration. Okay, I am getting ready to mask my walnut plywood. Um, just wanted to remind you, you wanna look at the grain of the wood because that's really important for your finished project. I forget that a lot. I mask it. I just see where it can fit on the board and I cut it and then I realize there's some weird knot or some weird design. Um, depending on what you're cutting, you might want, you know, the uniqueness of the wood and stuff. Like, I think this is beautiful, but it might not be the best for the background of a busy sign or such. So, um, just in general, this, this side feels a little bit cleaner to me. I actually really like the angled wood um, grain. Uh, so I, I usually try to tilt um, my design so that it's actually at a complete angle. Um, just something to consider. This one is obviously um, horizontal, I've done vertical, um, and they all just have a, just a slightly different look. So for this one, I'm going to try to do it um, at an angle and we'll see if that turns out. The one I did at an angle and accident looked really great, um, but uh, let's see if I actually can accomplish that with doing it on purpose. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is put the masking on this. So it rolls off just like any other tape. And then I um, have a Cricut, so I use this little um, tool and just push it on there really hard to make sure that it sticks so that it doesn't flare up in the laser. So I will do that and we will put this baby in the laser and see what she can do. We are going to take a quick look at how I have my Glowforge file set up um, before we get into cutting. Um, here you can see I've tilted it. I actually drew a line, which you'll see in the photo before, of the angle I wanted the sign to be cut at. Um, I'm choosing thick walnut plywood as the material, which is a uh, the proof grade settings for Glowforge. However, I I have been unsuccessful with having it cut through the plywood. So I actually do custom settings, which I'll go into um, in a minute. For my signs, I like to score the design so that I know exactly where my acrylic letters will be placed. I do a technique in Illustrator, which reduces the outline um, or actually just makes an inside outline on the letters so that they're not quite as large as the real ones that I place so that you don't see the outline. Um, maybe at some point I'll do a video on how exactly I do that. Um, but over here you can see I score the letters, I score the shoes, I ignore the detail of the shoes because that's just specifically for the acrylic. I score no place like home and I have specific settings, manual settings that I add for the cutting. Um, I also want to point out that this is the order in which Glowforge will perform these steps. So I always cut last since um, cutting can, you know, move the material a bit. Um, and so it's something that I forget a lot, but is important to remember. So for these specific settings, I found that speed of 130 works to cut through my quarter inch uh, walnut plywood. I have it on full power. I do two passes. And in this case, my calipers, I believe said that the material was uh, 0.24 inches. Um, it's about a quarter inch. So let's go ahead and get started.
just showing how I'm removing the masking. It's just tape. So just pulling that off. Um, one trick I learned is, um, at least with the mineral oil, I leave the masking on the middle of the letters so that the wood stays dry there and that the adhesive sticks a little bit better. Um, with the brush on um, finish, I'm not sure if that's going to work the same way. It seems like it's seep under, but um, I'm still going to leave the masking on there just to see if it helps uh, at all, um, and we'll go from there. I am now going to try to cut the silver acrylic with the dish soap. Um, I'm too impatient to find out if you needed to add water or anything, so I'm just going to add it direct uh, and see if it works. And then on the back, I still have the 3M sticky stuff. Is that the right spot? I might have to add a little bit more right there so that it covers it all. Um, wow. No. Oh, I can see. Look. Brilliant. Um, so I will try to see if that works out. Let's just add some here. Rub it across. Seems like fun to put under a fire. Okay. Yeah, let's see. All right, so I actually have a separate file just for the silver glitter to cut out. And there's my words on top of the soap. Gonna make sure to change this. So for glitter acrylic, I've read that black, um, medium black acrylic is the setting to use because the glitter is kind of thick. I actually use thick black acrylic, even though um, the focus is going to be a little bit off. Uh, I found that it cuts good, uh, no issues there. And the medium just didn't work for me. So this is what I use and I um, have found that it's successful. So let's see what happens with the soap. waiting and waiting. I didn't really see anything. Seems like a normal amount of flame. We'll see when it gets done. This seems impossible to capture in video, but they look identical. Yeah, they look pretty close. Um, I cannot tell the difference between the masking and the soap. Um, the sheen is the same, the sparkle's the same. Uh, so clearly the soap is a heck of a lot less work. So I probably will stick with that method. We are now at the stage, ooh, can't that. Um, now at the stage where I will be cutting out the red pieces. Uh, so I have my shoes on masking, which is important because um, I'm going to engrave those blue lines. And when I engrave them and it's finished, I will color those in with the oil, the sparkly silver oil paint, so that they have, um, so that lasts once I peel off the masking. The no place like home, I don't need masking on, even though it overlaps a little bit, but I did the soap thing again. And um, no need to really remove the masking of the other parts, because I am using still the thick black acrylic, so it'll cut through just fine. Here are my um, settings, engrave, cut, and cut. Um, and again, this is on red glitter acrylic. Um, sometimes the reflection of glitter is terrible and you have a, a trouble seeing your lines. I bought cheap little magnets from Amazon and I just put them on the edges so I know where my edge is if it reflects so badly that I can't see. I'm sorry for my ridiculously dirty Mac screen, but this is my life. Here are my shoes cut out. So now I'm going to take my marker and color in. Oh, that's way too close on my hand. It just looks creepy. Um, ha. Okay, anyway, you're going to color in all the lines until you can't see any of that color and then wait until it dries. Now I know some people spray um, like clear acrylic on this first so that the lines don't bleed. I didn't find that that really worked for me. Uh, so I just, right when it's cut, I color it in, wait until it dries, maybe 
an hour or so. Um, I know that it is better to wait 24 hours. Good for you if you can do that. Uh, I have little patience and I'm working on it. I know it's an issue. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna color this in and then we'll go from there. This is still drying. My polyacrylic top coat there, but it's looking good. Um, and then all my letters here are cut out, ready to go. And there's the 3M adhesive. And um, so once everything is dry, I will show you how I put everything together. So my shoes are now at the state that um, they're probably not dry, but um, for my purposes, I will show you how this works. Um, and let's hope you can see it. But I just go and I slowly remove the masking and what is left behind the masking is my cute little lines, as you can see. So um, I would do that for each section, just pull off the tape. Um, again, people use clear acrylic sealer to seal some of these lines um, so that they don't bleed. For this tutorial, I don't really need to go to that extent. Um, I also find sometimes, because of my impatience, the lines do bleed a little bit, and if I use my nail and just push slightly, it does not take off the finish, it does not remove the paint from the lines, and I end up with the proper um, colored in lines there without an issue. So I will go ahead and take care of that. Um, also, my letters are re ready to go like we talked about, so let me actually show you on um, camera. So we're gonna use the letter M here, and I'm just going to remove the backing real quick. So um, you can see, oh, can you? Yeah, okay, come on, come on off of there. You're, you're on video, so please remove, be nice. Um, okay, so now the back of the M looks like this. It's just clear, double-sided sticky tape, ready to go. I'm gonna take my sign, here we go. And then my guideline, like I talked about, um, and I'm just gonna place that letter right on top of those lines. And you shouldn't see the lines. You can see it just slightly sometimes, but for the most part, um, they're inside of that marking, so you don't end up seeing the lines. Um, and so there is my M. I feel like there's a little bit of soap on there. Um, and then I just go through and I place the rest of those letters in their proper location. Um, for these thin letters, um, they are a bit trickier to place just because they're thin, but um, same method, same general idea there. And for my little guy, my little apostrophe on theirs, I do use tweezers to add them, to add it just very, very precisely. Um, and I will show you what it looks like when it's complete. Okay, we now have the completed sign with the shoes adhered and the um, glitter acrylic as well. And you can see the finished product. Um, at this point, there's a variety of ways that you could uh, mount this or put it on a little easel. Um, I chose to make a base stand. I don't have the measurements right now. They seem to be a little off in what I wrote down. Um, so hopefully by the time I actually type this out, I'll have figured out what exactly went wrong when I wrote this up. Um, but I found that, let's say my material is about 0.22 inches thick. I find that um, I need to only make this about 0.225 uh, for it to fit in there properly. Um, and then if it's still a little bit too tight, I sand it a bit and then it fits perfectly. I like that it's removable um, just for transportation purposes. Um, but I know that there's lots of people out there that have come up with interesting methods like um, buying the generic Jenga blocks from like the Dollar Tree and um, like creating a, a taller base and then just gluing one on the front and one on the back to make a base. Um, that's, I'll tell you, way more easy than whatever I've come up with here because this is a challenge. Even if I consistently cut them out, sometimes for whatever reason, they're just a little bit off. Um, but um, however you end up making a base um, this way or other ways, um, this is your completed little sign. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed following along with me today. Um, I'm still learning a uh, hell heck of a lot, so my goal is just to share what I've learned. Um, as I learn, I'll update these videos and hopefully uh, share more of what I figured out. Um, I'm still learning from lots of other people in the community as well, and I just hope that you know everyone can, in my dream peaceful world, everybody can share what they've learned and uh, realize that we're all kind of creatives and in this together and all trying to help each other out, whether you're trying to start a business or just doing this creatively for fun. Um, I just think it's really fun to share and, and see how everybody uh, comes up with their own ideas and uh, own projects and stuff. And so I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I have my comments open below or you can reach out to me at Nicole at HelloFairyTale.com and I will get back with you as soon as possible. Um, and I think that's all I have for today. So have a great afternoon.